the new company control of Carlo Pesenti, the Lancia management decides to place a new sedan on the market to replace the previous Aurelia model. In May 1956, an exhibition chassis and a pre-series car were presented at the Turin Motor Show. The International Motor Show in Turin was opened by the Italian president, Signor Gronchi. Con vivissima curiosità era attesa la presentazione ufficiale della nuova Flaminia e l'aspettativa non è andata certo delusa. The sedan is innovative, equipped with wide windows and a large roof with six comfortable six folding doors, the respect the Lancia tradition, it is powered by the new 2.5 liter six cylinder derived from the 2.2 liters of the Aurelia. The style was entrusted to Pininfarina, although the design was by Mario Revelli di Beaumont, who had a secret role in this operation that would resurface from time to time. Since I recently catalogued its archive, I had a rare opportunity to study this car in detail. Word is circulating at the show that it is possible to place an order, but the first car will be delivered the following year. As in Turin, also in Paris, the new Flaminia sedan, a name borrowed from an ancient Roman road, as was the tradition of the Turin company, is attracting interest and success. But here is the surprise at the Geneva Motor Show. The Flaminia on display at the Lancia stand is another car. Similar in shape, but actually very different from the pre-series one. The headlights are different, the doors have the traditional onward opening. But what happened to the previous model, nobody knows. It wasn't long before Pininfarina exhibited at the 1957 Turing Motor Show a large two-door sedan on its stand, nicknamed Florida II, and it was the heir to the Florida sedans built by Pininfarina on the Aurelia B56 chassis and presented as show cars at the motor shows of the previous year. The Florida II, apparently built as an exercise in style, was destined to be the personal car of Battista Farina, founder and owner of the company of the same name. The solution of the two doors without the central pillar is the same as that adopted on the Florida B56 chassis number 1002, show car, and serves to obtain brightness in the passenger compartment and greater momentum in the design of the roof. The car doesn't go unnoticed, after all, it's the boss car, and for a short period it was more successful than the Flaminia sedan itself, at least as regards the mentions in the specialized press. The car also took part in the Campione d'Italia Elegance Concourse in 1958, where it received the Grand Prix of Honor, and in the Rome Concourse. In the same year, the Flaminia Coupé, built under license by Pininfarina, was presented at the Turin Motor Show. In practice, it is a two-door sedan, as it used the same chassis as the Flaminia sedan, as well as the engines. The similarities with the Florida II are notable, apart from the presence of the central pillar and the deflectors on the door. It is not for nothing that the designer is always Brevelli di Beaumont in all the three cases. Un'altra caratteristica eccezionale di questa vettura è questa linea che è completamente diversa da tutte quelle che si facevano dieci anni fa. Una linea completamente rivoluzionaria. Eh, dettata non già per eh, una questione stilistica ma per una questione di necessità di spazio il, il passeggero è seduto qui e la testa arriva in questo punto se questa vettura fosse convenzionale la linea convenzionale come tutte le altre così il passeggero non potrebbe avere il, 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 abbastanza posto per sedere in 1959, the Florida II was modified in some small details that at first glance seemed irrelevant, as seen in this photo. 
the wheel caps are changed now the same time as the sedan and the Pininfarina logo was moved forward. However, it remains painted in black with a blue bore skin interior. Yes, but why is the Pininfarina logo moved? Because Revelli, in the meantime, has filed a new door opening patent. In practice, it is a second smaller door without the two-step opening handle. Battista Farina exploits the idea and files a second patent relating only to the system for unlocking the smaller door, which is only possible from the inside, thus allowing the wardrobe opening without modifying the lines of the side. This patent, which has since expired, was acquired by BMW, which applied it to the Mini Club 2007 model year. This modification, which radically changed the typology of the car, paradoxically making it even more of a show car, even though this was not the main intention, will leave room for much confusion and for years the public will think that two similar cars were built. Battista Farina would drive the Florida II until his death in 1966 after which the car was put to rest and in the early 80s it became part of the Pininfarina collection at the new headquarters in Cambiano. Here the car remained kept until 2015 when on the occasion of the 85th anniversary of the company foundation it was decided to exhibit it again to the general public. The car, which had been standing still for too long, underwent a general overhaul to make it roadworthy again, carried out in the Pininfarina Special Projects and Restoration Department. The person in charge, engineer Umberto Niola, to whom I have a long friendship, was happy to inform me of the details and together we discovered with amazement that the body of the Florida II had been mounted on the chassis of the Flaminia sedan number no. 1, the very one exhibited at the Turin Motor Show in 1956. When it was presented, the Florida II overturned the style of the time, which was the all-round plastic one, introducing uptight lines and smooth surfaces with elegance and harmony of proportion, a theme that would influence the automotive design until the 80s. The Florida II is undoubtedly considered a timeless car. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share this video.